Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Srinivas Hegde. I am from Google, and we'll be talking about an introduction to K-native productivity um, and some basic things about what K-native is and what do we actually mean by K-native productivity and what we are doing to make the community productive within K-native. So just to show of hands, how many have actually heard or actually read or know about K-native and would like to use them? Yeah, that's pretty great. Uh, that's a pretty sizable number. So the basic agenda for today is we'll dis discuss a couple of things about K-native. What do we actually mean by K-native productivity? What are the s some tools that we are currently using or we plan to use soon? And some time for Q&A at the end. So let's start with what exactly do we mean by K-native? So Knative is a platform that provides building blocks for serverless on top of any Kubernetes implementation. It provides us a set of primitives like serving that can be used to deploy and serve your application or a container. It, can, it also has a build system where you can actually build from your source directly to a Kubernetes container. And it also has an eventing framework which you can use to create and define different kinds of events. And Knative is de designed with several different personas in mind. When we think about Knative users, we think of them as either contributors, who, users who actually want to actively contribute to the Knative code base and make it better. There can be developers who want to use Knative components like serving or eventing or any of these, or all of them, into their own products and functions or as a service. And we also think of them as operators who actively want to monitor how their product, which uses Knative implementation under the hood, actively is working on and is maintained. And Knative is designed with not just Google, but it's a community uh, Forum, and we have multiple partners, including Pivotal, IBM, Red Hat, SAP, and several others. Knative right now has 12 rep repos under the Knative umbrella, and we have more than 400 users actively interacting with the code base on a daily basis. So what do we mean by Knative productivity in this scenario? So the Knative productivity is led by Jesse Zhu and Adriano Kunha. Uh, these are their GitHub usernames. And we meet every other Thursday at 2.30 p.m. So this is basically the mission statement or the charter for Knative productivity. We want to enable all the contributors to write high quality, high velocity deliverables. We want to have predictable releases that can be measured and drive high community collaboration and improve the overall productivity of everyone who wants to actively use or contribute to Knative. So what do you exactly mean by these terms here? So writing code and the tests is fine, but we want a system, we want a very well-oiled machine that also enables us to do good issue management, good PR management, and several other things that a, that a contributor would need to actively contribute code to Knative. With high velocity, what we aim at is basically the contributors should, whenever from the time it takes to the first commit to merging your PR to actually releasing, the, uh, re releasing your changes should be super fast and everyone should be responsive enough. And for releases, every contributor or developer or external user who wants to use Knative, we want them to have a predictable amount of release cadence which they can define and they, they can use. And finally, we want very high collaboration amongst every single person who wants to contribute to Knative. We want it to be all the owners are pretty responsive and we want them to respond to the GitHub PR conversations or our Slack channels or any other uh, chat messages or things like that, we, uh, we, we set a very high bar on uh, fast response times. So when we think about Knative productivity, we actually think in these four scenarios. So first we'll be looking at test health, where we are trying to target 
very fast pre-submits, attack any flakiness from your tests, reduce the amount of toil in debugging, and improving the debugging experience for any test. For release health, we want good release automation that can produce us releases, releases predictably and handle different kinds of versioning between tests and CRDs. For performance, what we are looking at is we want the contributors to write and run the perf tests, and they should be able to see the regressions that their changes are causing in the PRs. And for all this to happen, we want actual insightful and actionable metrics that we can actively act on. So everyone is familiar with these two uh, tests in the testing pyramid, the unit tests and the integration tests. But Knative is a platform, and it will have different implementations of the Knative runtime contract. So what we want the users to also test on is a set of conformance tests. The conformance tests define how the implementation performs against the actual runtime contract. So any contributor or user should be able to run the conformance test and confident enough that their implementation satisfies the runtime contract or not. Along with the conformance test, we need a set of versioning tests. What the versioning test define is basically there are different, so we have CRDs that define different objects on top of the Kubernetes implementation. So you can have different CRD versions and you can even target different versions of Knative. So we want some tests that basically target different versions of your releases and different versions of your CRDs. So for release health, what we are targeting for is we need a predictable release cadence for all your releases. We, ha we have an hourly job to run all the tests, and we have a nightly job to push the latest code to a nightly environment, and we have a weekly job that actually runs and pushes all the code to a weekly environment. And for performance, uh, we think of performance as dif in different, different two th types. The black, spot, the black box performance testing is basically sending a bunch of QPS to an endpoint and just testing whether you get the number of 200s and the number of 500s and things like that. For white box performance testing, what we are looking at is if we send a bunch of QPS, the controller will emit some kind of metrics. The different components emit different metrics. How do we actually serve the requests and how do we actually handle those requests? And these can either be for your pre-submits or we can run them nightly or we can run them weekly. And the different components that we care about during a performance test is basically the load generators or the benchmarking and the different chartings that we can use. So all this is great, but we need metrics. And we need some actionable metrics. So for so the different kinds of metrics that we are looking at right now in Knative is based, uh, for test health, we are looking at the test flakiness. We verify how much the tests are passing or failing. The amount of code every test covers. We have a PR job that actually looks at the amount of code coverage that every test runs the time to actually run the test, and the resources that are needed to run the test. And for release health, we have a periodic job that automates all our releases. And so we look at how the job is doing, and what are the other tests that we run with the releases, what's their flakiness rate, and how much time does it take to run. So for performance metrics, what we look at is the latency metrics. For example, what's the percentile for P50, P90, P99, and things like that. And what we are lo also looking at is uh, the auto-scaling metrics. Auto-scaling is an important feature for Knative. And what we are looking at is how much time does it take for 0 to 1 auto-scaling. That means that when I deploy and send a request, how much time does it take for the first pod to come up and actually serve the request? We are also looking at one to zero auto scaling. For example, if I, if I don't send a request for a lot of time, how much time does it take for the last pod to actually turn down? And we are also looking at one to 1,000 scaling is basically how much time does it take for it to go from one pod to 1,000 pods to serve your request? And 
the different server metrics that we are looking at is the different controller metrics. So for all, all our CIDs, we have custom controllers that serve different kinds of metrics. We are looking at the different controller metrics that the server responds with. We are looking at the different pod metrics, like number of pods required to run the test, or number the amount of time it takes to bring up a pod. And we are also looking at the autoscaler metrics, like how much time does it take for the autoscaler to actually respond to the first request, what's the queue length for it to serve different kinds of requests, and other things like that. So now we can actually take a look at the different tools that we use or want to use. So first is CICD. So for CICD, we have different kinds of pre-submit and post-submit workflows that gate the quality of check-ins. And we have different uh, release automation pipelines, and we want to maintain the quality of the release. We want to define and implement the different release criteria and the define the process around it. And the CI-CD system should allow us to run all sorts of tests that we want to run on, also on different cadences. And all the outputs and metrics should be stored in the logs. So the CI-CD system that we use is PRO. Uh, if you attended the PRO lecture recently, like in the like couple of hours ago, there were they gave a good that was a good lecture for PRO. Uh, so PRO is basically a Kubernetes first CI/CD solution. It is being used for uh, all the Kubernetes repos. It's been battle tested with Kubernetes. It's very easy to configure. It's very easy to extend. And it handles all the plumbing for you from GitHub to storage. So we use Prow to basically have our PR jobs that run our code coverage jobs, run all the tests, and produce results in the GitHub PR conversation. Or we have periodic jobs that basically run them nightly or hourly, and we release uh, and also use this for our release process. So the next thing we'll talk about is the load generator metrics. Uh, so as a load generator, what we wanted for our perf test was we wanted a simple Golang library that we can integrate within Knative. And we wanted the load generator to provide all the data points that it can from the response. For example, if we send 1,000 QPS, it should not just tell me, like, I had 500, 200s, and 500, uh, 200s, and 500, 500s. I want to know what exactly what happened with each request, and how it was responded, and what's the response from that for every Q query that I send. And if it has advanced features like latency calculation and charting and things like that, that would be great. So the the tool that we are using uh, for performance testing is called Fortio. Uh, it's an open source tool developed by the Istio team. And the main advantages of Fortio is uh, it can run at a fixed QPS and not just max QPS. And it also provides us with, us with a server which we can use to actually test any proxies or ingresses that we will be using. And it can generate standard HTTP2 in addition to HTTP 1.1. And Fortio is a simple Go library, which we can easily integrate with uh, our Go testing framework. So, and it provides some default charting capabilities that allow us to uh, show the histogram data of all the rec response rates and provides all the data points that we can later on interact with. And it also help, gives us you a JSON output of everything that happened. So you can easily parse the data and uh, act on those things. So finally, what we want is uh, some dashboards to actually look at the metrics that we are generating. So we want the dashboards to have some monitoring in place to monitor the health of the workflows and the actual infrastructure. We want to monitor all our releases and all our repos. We want to monitor the test health and measure the flakiness for every test. And we want to alert when some thresholds that we predefined are not met. So the solution that we are currently using is TestGrid. Uh, 
So test grid is great because it gives you a nice grid view of the status and the metric. So you can actually see what's happening for your test, whether they are passing, failing, and any latency metric if you're looking at, then you can say P50, what's the value? And it can be expanded to actually show the value of the metric. So it, you can actually say, what's the value of my P50 right now? And it can tell you P50 is one second, or for example. And it has some default charting capabilities to show the actual trends in recent runs. So you can expand that and say, I want to know how, how what's happening in my 50th percentile latency for the last three days, and it can show you that value. And TestGrid has been battle tested with Kubernetes uh, again. Uh, Kubernetes uses TestGrid heavily to show all its metrics uh, and all its tests. So we have been using that and trying to uh, use that for, uh, for Knative as well. And basically, that's what that's what we are trying to do with Knative. And yep, um, so that was my presentation. So, do you guys any have any questions? Yes, please. Can we see some of the graphs and metrics? Uh, yeah. Uh, so there will there is actually a deep dive session. Uh, on Thursday at 4.30 p.m., where we'll go a dip, bit more detail about the tools that we are trying to use uh, that will explain how we actually, contributors can commit to the PRs, to interact with the code base, and how you can actually see those metrics later. Uh, so you can attend that session to get more information. Prow, yes, Prow is open source. Uh, it's in the Kubernetes test infra repo, uh, and it can be used to configure any CI/CD solution. So you can use it for any repo outside of Kubernetes as well. And these are the different other Knative talks for those interested in Knative. Uh, today and tomorrow and on Thursday, there are different talks uh, that go a bit more detail into what actually Knative does and some of the features of Knative. Thank you. <laughs>